Hello everybody, John here, and today on To The Garage, we are doing an XK8 show. And for those of you not familiar with the channel, uh, To The Garage is a YouTube channel all about tinkering in the garage and shed, playing around with all sorts of cars and bits and bobs, primarily Jaguars and the XK8, my favourite, uh, plus quite a lot of Volkswagen and Jeep related stuff. Um, but now and again we have an XK8 show and that is all sorts of bits and pieces uh, show and tell from you guys in terms of your cars stories bits and pieces from me uh, who done it how's it done and questions so let's get involved last time I asked you to send in some pictures of your car if it was an Arden car just as a reminder Arden is a German tuning house and is one of the approved tuning houses from Jaguar. And some of their uh, cars that have been modded by them really do look spectacular. That has prompted um, some other discussion in the comments about, oh, I don't think yours is a real one, mine's real, etc, etc. So just to clear that up, I like them all, but there are basically three categories of Arden vehicle, if you like. First is, Arden provide a range of spares and accessories, um, components that they would fit as part of their conversion, which you can fit yourself. So you can buy just a front air dam, uh, you could buy wheel centers from them and fit them yourself. Great Arden parts on your car. Um, the next one is you can have Arden fit parts to your car and they have a more extensive range of offerings typically if that's been done. Um, and you might send it to Germany, to Arden, or to one of their franchise dealers, I guess is the word. And then there's a third category where the vehicle, either brand new, straight from the factory, or immediately that the owner had got hold of it, sent their car off to Arden to have it modified and tweaked from new. And um, some of those are the more extreme examples. Um, but for me, they're all valid, they're all interesting. But yeah. There's different degrees to which a car is an Arden car. Um, they also offered some special uh, additions. <clears throat> I believe the Typhoon was one very, very limited run. Um, might even be one car where they basically offered a package of upgrades and additions. So on to some subscribers' cars pictures. Uh, these are a couple of images that you may have seen before. So this is Asif Hasnain's and uh, 99XKR and he has got the Arden tuning wheels and the Arden front air dam and I think they're the only Arden features on this car um, and you can see quite transformative I really really like Arden wheels I think they got the, uh, the styling very good if you're not going to go Jaguar they're a very good option for contrast, uh, these are some pictures sent in by Eric Jansen. They're of his friend's XKR, um, which uh, these are pictures taken in Taiwan, where the car lives. And this guy bought the car secondhand. The original owner bought the car new and then shipped it to Germany to have the full in and out Arden treatment. And you can see that it's got the same sorts of air dam and side skirts as you see on a lot of others, but really well integrated. And the big change is Arden have gone to town inside the car as well. And you can literally have whatever you fancy. Um, these are pretty extreme colours. You may have seen the sort of green colour um, on the steering wheel of teal interior cars. But here the leather um, has been extended in various other places. Note the full walnut door cappings and what I would call toffee or fudge. Um, it's probably called London Tan, I think. Um, that sort of toffee colour for the lever on the lower half. Um, so Arden can do the interiors and the exteriors. This one is Damien Nyman's 99 XK8, uh, which again displaces the idea that only XKRs can be Arden cars. Um, this is one where Damien had tracked down all the Arden bits and installed them and uh, made very sophisticated looking car, I think. Um, 
the uh, body kit, Damien noted, he feels the later XK8s, XKRs, the, the Mark IIs, if you like, were very much inspired by these Arden looks. And I think he's right. Um, they're subtle, they work, and it's probably inspired the later versions of the XK8 and XKR from the factory. A little aside for your interest, this car was originally bought, specced and owned by a guy called Larry Ellison, the owner of the American tech giant Oracle. Um, so a car with a very famous owner. Some of these pictures really show off the fact that even black isn't boring when it's a Jaguar. There's so many colours and things going on in the pearl and the metallic. I'm also uh, sad enough to have looked in the background of this photo and noticed that he's at a Jag show. If not, he's got the best neighbours ever. So, uh, thank you very much, Damien Nyman. Well, thank you very much to those guys who sent in their uh, photographs. Please keep sending in the photos, uh, generally, um, but also of the Arden stuff. I have got some of this, if you're thinking, oh, he hasn't shown mine. Um, saving things up for another little session, um, maybe looking at some of the details behind what Arden can do. Um, let's go now and look at some non ardent material. And this beautiful XKR coupe is owned by Jules, um, regular commenter and contributor to our channel. Thank you very much, Jules, for getting involved so much. And um, I, I think he's sending a beautiful picture of his car there. I love the clear indicators and side markers. Maybe gives you a clue about one of my future jobs. And Jules is obviously a pet lover as well. And you see that his doggy loves the back seat of his XK as much as mine does. They are doggy sized rear seats, not for humans. And um, anybody who thinks we don't live on a beautiful island, this is called Baggy Point, North Devon. Uh, I even had to ask um, Jules where the photo was taken because the colour of the water is spectacular. That is a beautiful shot. Next, another car you'll be familiar with. This is Nigel's um, XKR Mark One. Beautiful. I really, really like the look of this car. We've seen it several times. But the reason for uh, reminding you of Nigel's uh, car is he sent in a little, very short video clip, but it's kind of a cautionary tale all on its own. If you change the serpentine belt on your engine, it's a multi-ribbed and quite finely ribbed drive belt. And the tensioners on our engines are really powerful. So take a look at this image. And what Nigel thinks has happened here is when he originally changed this belt and fitted it, he fitted it incorrectly, you know, it was off by a tooth, something like that. The tensioner really pulls it tight and it moved itself across and in doing so basically damaged the ribs and put a permanent uh, track in it, causing the belt to jump around like crazy. So be very careful if you're changing your serpentine belts to seat them very, very carefully before you release the tension on the tensioner and uh, start her up for the first time. Thank you very much, Nigel. Our next contributor is Kevin Taylor, and he's got this beautiful 99 Mark 1 XK8 convertible, and he lives in Cape Town, and he's got a question about the tonneau cover, and, and, and tonneau cover, we're talking the black in this case, vinyl cover, that covers the folded hood. Um, I'll let Kevin ask the question in his own words. Hi there, um, I've got a question, <clears throat> I've, I have a 99 XK8 and I've only had it a short while and the tonneau cover for the, for the roof is stored underneath the floor. I'm wondering if that's the correct place for it or should it be in a bag loose on top like I've seen in your videos. So that's a really good question from Kevin and I have responded to him separately 
uh, but not with a definitive answer because I genuinely don't have one. Um, I'm going to pop over to the whiteboard and just talk you through some of my thoughts. But at the essence of this is, do you guys know where the intended place for that um, turnover cover to be stored is? Anybody worked in the factory and know about some sort of instruction that came with it? Um, there's nothing to my knowledge in any of the manuals and I've had two XK8s, both convertibles, both very second hand and in both cases the Tono was in a leverette bag and just lay on top of the boot floor and I carried on using it that way. But it's just to have a talk through on the whiteboard and yeah, really like some input for me and for Kevin from you guys on this. So if, uh, if I just give you orientation, and what we're talking about is um, I have always stored my tono here in a black vinyl bag that came with the car flat on top of the boot floor. Um, what Kevin has got, because this is how he got the car, is he hasn't got the bag, but he has got the tono, and it's stored here on top of the space saver. So, first question is, which of those is the intended location? Um, if you've got the boot floor in the lower of the two positions, then the boot floor actually sits on the um, the hold down nut that you use to clamp down on your spare wheel. So that would mean that you damage the tono cover. So you've certainly got to have it in the higher of the two positions, but which of those two is correct or which was intended is the question. Um, certainly, I can say that it should be in a bag, there should be a tono bag, and that is something you might be able to buy off of eBay. But it started me thinking as well about, um, I'm forever moving this around to get underneath the, the uh, false floor, um, to move it out of the way of things that I'm gonna drop in the boot that I don't really want sitting on the tono for too long. It's not the most convenient of setups. So there are a couple of other locations I was considering um, to relocate this to. And one of them, the one I had sort of most hopes for, is to take my bag, add a couple of poppers to it, and store it vertically against the fuel tank. And that does, that does work, it sort of wraps under just a little bit, it's not a perfect fit. And by putting a couple of poppers, I could pop the bag back and it could sit vertically there at the back. Um, another option is there is a cargo net that you can buy, a sort of stretchy net thing. I'm sure there's a Jaguar specific one, but anyone would do. Which, again, you can pin to that um, sheet of steel behind the carpet here um, and make yourself a, a, a net that, again, I could tuck in the tono cover into. Behind this panel is your fuel tank. Um, but again, we're only talking a convertible here because tono. Um, there is a compartment here that the hood folds down into. And I have tried and you can take that bag and you can throw it over the back of the back seats and it will sit in there like that. Um, negatives of that, obviously you can only get it in and out whilst the hood's up, uh, so you've got to think ahead a little bit. Uh, it does stand up a little bit at the back, it would be semi-folded. Um, if you put it in incorrectly or fold it badly, then maybe the hood wouldn't pull down completely, uh, but obviously it is quite a thin item. So, um, what is the experience you guys have got, where do you keep yours? Uh, and does anybody know what was original design intent from Jaguar, or was it simply an afterthought and nobody really considered it and it got chucked in the cars, thinking, ah, nobody use this thing. 
That's the question. Where should it live? Anyway, thank you, Kevin, for a really interesting question, something I'd never considered, and hopefully we'll have uh, loads of answers in the comments below. So, as we said, Kevin, new owner for the XKs, uh, black on black, beautiful car, and um, he's got quite the collection and has been generous enough to share some images from his home. So, I've even got these written down. So he's got this car, which is a racing Capri. It's a 1972 3000 GT. It's a reasonably well-known car called Old Blue. And you can search for Old Blue Racing Capri on Facebook if you want to find out more about it. Needless to say, Kevin is quite the um, racing fan and gets out in his motors. This is where Kev parks his XK8. This is where we all start to get really jealous. Look at all the space. And look at the collection. I'm no Ford man, but I'm dribbling. Um, so I've got a list here because of my naivety about Fords. Uh, nice to see the Union flag in there, Kev. Um, he's got a 71 Capri 3000 GT, a 72 Capri V8 Piranha, a 72 3000 GT race car, which we've just seen, a 69 Capri V6 Piranha, one of only 22 ever made and only two known to exist. Um, a 72 Ford 20M 3000 RS. Uh, a 73 Ford Cortina 2000 GT. A 68 Ford Mustang Fastback 289 V8. A 2002 Land Rover Discovery Mark II uh, V8. A 2014 Ford Ranger T6 3.2 and a 1999 Jaguar XK8 convertible. And he's got a few others like a Subaru Forester and a Daihatsu Copen, which, you know, barely worth mentioning in the context of the rest of this list. Yeah, not bad, eh? And that's it. Oh, except he quite likes motorbikes as well. I am reading here and I quote, I also have a collection of Honda motorcycles, mainly Honda CBX 1000s, from 1979 through to 1982. I have 12 of them, plus one CB754 and one Honda Blackbird. Kevin, I have a motto and that is, he who dies with the most toys wins. Congratulations, sir. You are doing well. Uh, living the dream. It's been fabulous to see a lot of these pictures of rare Fords, but also a lot of South African um, spec stuff that we just don't see in Europe. Um, I showed my naivety by asking a little bit more about what I assumed to be a South African nosed and obviously quite tweaked Ford Cortina, this red car. Kevin was kind enough to educate me and it's actually called a Ford P7. Uh, P720M, and this is a car that came before the Granada. Um, I'm pretty sure we never saw this at all in the UK. Um, it was sold as a Taurus in Germany with a 2.3 Cologne engine, but the South African cars like this had uh, V6 Essex engines. Kevin's is, of course, a super rare one, and this is a two-door RS, and I've got to say, I'm a huge fan of the styling on this. Once I saw these side images and the rear image particularly, um, as a Ford is not my thing, but I would love to own this car. Rarely have I seen anything that looked cooler in this era. Um, beautiful, beautiful thing. So Kevin, can't thank you enough for sharing the images and your question and giving us a little bit of um, view of South Africa and the Ford scene as well. So remember, if you're into um, Fords, guys, get over to Old Blue Racing Capri on Facebook. And you can see Kev and you can see his car and uh, get some more intel. Thank you so much. Well, I think that's more than enough for this XK8 show. Also, Molly's come for another treat. So that's practically telling me it's it's time, time to stop <laughs> playing on a computer and uh, leave you guys for another time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks to everybody whose bits and pieces of film footage stories have contributed to this. Please keep them coming in, loving them. 
and uh, we'll be back with more stuff real soon subscribe like give us a thumbs up share with your friends and uh, look forward to seeing your comments see you soon